Are you free? Are you free in your life? So what comes to our mind when we think of that question, are we free? Well, free of, free in what way? What type of freedom are we talking about? Are we free from things that keep us down? Free from, uh, free from sin, free from oppression. This past week, we celebrated, as you do every year, uh, the gift of freedom that we have from foreign occupation to be able to self-govern ourselves in the United States. And so we thank the Lord, the gift of, of this freedom that we've had uh, since the 1700s, late 1700s. A little view from uh, space of the United States and Mexico and Canada. But that encapsulates um, our country there. And I was thinking, especially with the gospel today, when Jesus is talking about how he goes to his own hometown, uh, or we hear that from Matthew, and it says his own hometown, but it could be translated as well, his own nation, his own country. So it got me thinking about my own hometown. I'm not sure if you remember where I'm from. Do you remember my hometown? It's not Philadelphia, actually. It's, it's Thornton, Pennsylvania. Thornton, which is a suburb of Philly. So it's left, you see on the left-hand side, all the way to the left, Thornton. About a uh, half-hour drive uh, to Philadelphia. More kind of this area, sort of. Um, Brandywine Battlefield is right, right near where I grew up. And so actually when you go, when you zoom in closer, you can see historical uh, part of, of Thornton there. Historical home of, that's amazing. <laughs> that's, uh, thank you. That was, that, was, that was great for them to put that. No, but in, in reality, um, it's not even big enough to be a city or a town. It's a, it's a village. And you can see some of the history there. It started in 1687, mostly known uh, for like the post office was used as a hospital during the Revolutionary War. So a lot of history there. So it's always great when I go home. But I was thinking about when Jesus went home and where he was raised, how he was persecuted. Uh, he was persecuted. He was insulted by his own uh, extended family, by his own neighbors. And that um, reminded me, a little sensitive topic, but I'm not sure if you know, but I was, I was persecuted, I would uh, say, even in my own family growing up. Uh, for example, um, one time, one time, you know, they, they, ha they did this to me. And uh, no, that, that actually, that's, Colonial Williamsburg. So I put myself in that, actually, because I thought it was a good picture. Or they persecuted me and my sisters by trying to have us, you know, force fun upon us, sending us to amusement park like Hershey Park. And uh, so you can see, I wasn't having too much fun there. So, so in my mind, that was persecution, persecution. But in reality, that's not persecution. And I, I'm thankful to the Lord for gift to my family and, and my faith. But sometimes that may not be the case for us. Sometimes we may have been persecuted or been persecuted by our family or extended family or neighbors or coworkers or fellow students because of our faith, because of, of, uh, of our beliefs. Sometimes we are insulted because of, of, uh, of our Catholic faith. Sometimes it's not our family. Sometimes the persecution and insults come from other, other areas. And so we hear from St. Paul in the second reading today that he had this thorn in his flesh that he asked God at least three times. Maybe that's just expression three times. It could have been more than three times that he asked for this to go away. What was it, that thorn in the flesh? We don't know for sure. It could have been something psychological could have been spiritual, could have been physical. Something that he wanted to be healed of or they didn't have to struggle with it anymore. Lord, I want to be done with this. If I'm done with this particular struggle, then I would, I would be a better person. I would, I would be more happy. I would. And what's the answer that God gives to him? If you're going to memorize a verse, 
memorize verses. This is one of the verses to memorize. 2 Corinthians 12, 9. My grace is sufficient for you. My grace is sufficient for you. For power is made perfect in weakness. Power is made perfect in weakness. That's a tough message for us because we want to be stronger. We don't want to be weak. Even as a country, right? As a country, we want to be known as the United States of America, the greatest country in the world, greatest country of all time. God bless America. But don't we remember what happened in the past where Ezekiel is speaking to the Israelites, speaking to the chosen people of God, and God is saying, they are rebels. They're rebelling against, against my law, against my love. And they're doing their own thing. And so Ezekiel speaks to them. When they're in exile in Babylonia, and just before Jerusalem, and the temple is totally destroyed because they turned away from God. Is that the case for us as a country? For the United States? Time will tell. But we have to be that example for our fellow citizens of faithfulness to God, not just relying on our military might or not relying on that or our economy or whatever it is or democracy or the Constitution, how, what, how great it is, great. But we turn to God first. God first. This is a spiritual principle that we all have to learn, myself included. We all have our thorns. We all have our stuff that we're struggling with. I came across this uh, image of a St. Jerome and a lion. And as the legend goes, when St. Jerome translated the Bible from the ancient languages to the vulgar language, the Vulgate, which was the common language of the time, which was Latin, when he translated to Latin, um, he was in this area, and there was also wild, some wild beasts there, including lions. And so as the story goes, this lion, the king of the animal kingdom, has to come to St. Jerome because he has a thorn in his paw that, he can't, that the lion can't get out. So he has to go to St. Jerome to get that thorn out. Sometimes the reason why the Lord permits a thorn is that we come back to him. Because otherwise we would do our own thing, thinking that we are our, our own God. We're our own, we're self-sufficient, self-reliant. What does St. Paul say at the end of the reading? For when I'm weak, then I am strong. For when I'm weak, then I am strong. Do we believe that? Jesus went to his uh, hometown. These neighbors that knew him, his family as well. By the way, it says that they stated, is he not the carpenter, the son of Mary, and the brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon, and are not his sisters with us? Uh, time out. Here's a teaching here. So does that mean Jesus had brothers and sisters, literal brothers and sisters? No. Nope. From the beginning, the church has taught, always understood that these passages are not referring to, the other to any other children of the Virgin Mary. Remember, she's a blessed Virgin Mary, and uh, she's mother and virgin. That's the miracle there. In fact, James and Joseph, brothers of Jesus, are the sons of another Mary, a disciple of Christ, whom St. Matthew, at the end of his gospel, calls the other Mary. They are close relations of Jesus according to Old Testament expression. The ancient Hebrew language did not have a, a word that differentiated between brothers and sisters and cousins and aunts and uncles. They would put them all together. You find this with uh, Moses. We you find this with St. Paul. I, I had uh, a prisoner um, after the 8 a.m. Mass come up to me and say, thank you. I never knew that. I always thought that Jesus had brothers and sisters. We have to go deeper in our knowledge of the faith of the scriptures and see what they actually mean. Okay, but in either case, it was his uh, cousins, 
aunts and uncles, his extended family that was persecuting Jesus and his neighbors and say, we know you. How can you be the Messiah? They thought that they were putting him in his place, but they, in fact, were prideful themselves. We had to be careful about pride. As the expression is, pride goes before the fall. Pride goes before the fall. Where does that come from? Proverbs 16. Pride goes before disaster and a haughty spirit before a fall. We had to be focused on that as individuals, as family, as a country. Pride goes before the fall. So how are we going to stay humble or be humble? Keep on going back to God, especially in the thorns that you're dealing with right now, that struggle that you, you want to be done with, that sin or that temptation of sin or whatever it is. Keep on coming back to God no matter how many times. Keep on coming back. God never tires of forgiving us. Never. It's we that gives up on ourselves. Sometimes that person that's persecuting us the most is ourself. Because we say those lies about ourselves that we are no good, that we're not loved, that God is done with us. And that's a lie from the evil one. And we tend to believe it at times. When you hear that coming in your mind, say, no, I renounce that lie. I am a beloved son, a beloved daughter of God. I'm not defined by my sins, by my weaknesses, but defined by the love that God has for me. But do we believe this? St. Therese, one of my top three saints, says this, everything is a grace. By the way, remember her mom died of cancer when she was young. Her, her dad died in a mental institution when she was in a convent. She died when she was 24. She said, everything is a grace. Everything is a direct effect of our Father's love, difficulties, contradictions, humiliations, all the soul's miseries, her burdens, her needs, everything, because through them she learns humility, realizes her weakness. Everything is a grace. If we unite it to Jesus, everything, whatever you're struggling with right now, give that to the Lord. We can pray for healing, and maybe we'll receive healing, but even if not, give it to the Lord. Allow that to increase your faith. But we've got to be humble and not prideful. I'll end with this. This is a picture from Steubenville from our youth conference uh, two weekends ago. It doesn't do it justice, but you keep on the, the line is starting to the left of the picture. It goes all the way down the hill, they were waiting for confession. This is a line for confession. When it's in the 90s, when it's hot out there, they're lined up getting ready to go into the library, which is transformed into a big confessional, like 20, 30 priests there. Because they realize that they've sinned and they need God's mercy. Let's turn to the Lord in, in trust, asking for his help. Let those thorns that we're dealing with lead us to God, not away, so that in turn we may help others with similar thorns in their life. St. Therese, pray for us. St. Patrick, St. Gianna, St. Paul.